네, 녹화 시작됐습니다. 자, 이제 만찬식 정도에 네. 양쪽으로 한 번, 고개 들지 마시고, 양쪽 무릎 한번 펴보세요. 무릎, 네. 힘 빼시고, 양 옆으로 천천히 벌리세요. 그렇죠. 여러분 계세요, 잠깐만. 이제 위에 목으로도 시작됩니다. So hello everyone. Uh, today we are going to have a subcoronal approach uh, IPP inflatable penile prosthesis surgery into local anesthesia. The first part is how I do the local anesthesia. I usually start with the uh, pudendal block. My name is uh, Dr. Ernesto Gerial Jr. and I'm a practicing urologist from the Philippines. I'm actually involved in five hospitals in the Philippines, but my two major hospitals are, it's a government hospital, it's called the National Kidney and Transplant Institute, and one of the uh, modern and well-equipped hospital in the Philippines is called the St. Luke's Medical Center. I'm Dr. Leo Baloloy, I came from the Philippines, and uh, I'm a vascular surgeon, subspecialized in transplantation. My hospital is at the National Kidney and Transplant Institute and the uh, Makati Medical Center. Well, there came, there came a point in our practice that we need to look for something which we can offer our patients who needs help, particularly patients with erectile dysfunctions. We encounter patients with this problem, especially those who underwent uh, prostatectomy and also patients who underwent transplants. So it came to a point where patients would ask for some help and uh, medicines only offers a little. So there must be something more. And so someone told me that um, here in Korea, they're doing a lot of these cases and uh, there are good doctors here who does it. So we took the opportunity to come and visit and see how they do it here in Korea. In the Philippines, I think there's no data yet that will tell us uh, how much or how many are needing this procedure. But uh, I think we can tell somehow by the number of patients uh, looking for medical uh, remedy, uh, more or less you can surmise the number of patients probably needing this, uh, this uh, procedure. And uh, aside from that, uh, of course, uh, not all of those uh, under medical regimen will, will be needing this procedure, but uh, maybe a portion of that. I had uh, one opportunity sometime uh, two years ago in 2016 with the same purpose of having uh, to be exposed in penile implant. And I was able to go to Qatar in one of the big hospitals there. The government hospital is called the Hamad Hospital. But unfortunately, you, for some reasons, I was not able to see too much cases there. Mm -hmm. So I was only able to see two, but uh, it was not as in-depth as what I had seen here. I uh, attended some, but not of this kind of procedure. Uh, mostly in uh, conventions, the Asian vascular, uh, in Singapore, in Malaysia, and some other places. Oh, they're great. Okay. Especially for someone like us who is not very much familiar with this. And you see it in the actual performance. For a surgeon, the feeling is great. It's very educational and it's very informative. So today's case, really great. And we are happy to have that opportunity to see those cases. Uh, I have not seen uh, anything like that. So... It's a very much uh, a learning experience for us to be seeing these uh, two cases and with different approaches to implanting uh, prosthesis. Well, uh, maybe, well, at first I was surprised. I was surprised that you can do such a kind of surgery under local anesthesia. But probably for us beginners, we would rather do it in a way that the patient is asleep, so we can do it slowly. Mm. 
But of course, for the hands of an experienced surgeon, it would be best to do it under local anesthesia because you would know that the patient is doing okay when, you, when the patient can respond to your questions during the surgery. So for a beginner, maybe I would think twice in doing it under local, but once I gain more experience as we go along, then uh, probably it would be better if we do it under local. Two things, subcoronal approach and the local anesthesia. These two are what I want to tell them, but ultimately what I want to tell them is uh, there's a whole lot of different patient you know, characteristics. So we surgeons should be able to adapt every single case with a proper uh, method. Today's live surgery case was the reason why he had to have a, a local anesthesia is that uh, first of all, uh, erectile dysfunction surgery, this is not a life or death situation, right? I do not want to make any other serious complications because of the surgery. So this patient had a lung cancer and uh, he only have a one lung left. Okay, so, and he's, he's 77 years old. So having him go through under general anesthesia, you can, it's a whole lot of mess. He need to have a whole lot of different tests to get the general anesthesia for this surgery. And then and throughout the, you know, his uh, uh, mechanical ventilation during his uh, general anesthesia, his lung can be damaged severely. So why making a serious you know, impact in the patient life with the, something that is not affecting his you know, life? So that is my theory. This is not a life or death surgery, so I want to make as minimal as possible, as minimal impact as possible to the patient life. I am a vascular surgeon and uh, sometimes we deal with patients with uh, erectile dysfunction. Um, um, some of our uh, patients who underwent, for example, a, an open aneurysm repair of the abdominal cavity, uh, some of them develop uh, erectile dysfunction and I think uh, would be needing this procedure. And uh, some of our patients are chronic kidney disease patients with an early onset of erectile dysfunction. And I think uh, they would benefit from this procedure. Well, of course, we, we would be, we've been doing it in some other ways in all of our uh, uh, cases. We also do it in other urologic cases, so why not? Yeah. Why not? I think uh, this is one form of disseminating information, not only for the patients, but for the doctors who can do it as well. Previously, I had a live surgery at the uh, Taiwan uh, General Hospital, General uh, Hospital there. The difference to uh, today's live surgery is that uh, my center is just doing this, just doing the uh, penile prostatic surgery. So it is really well equipped and well prepared. All my staffs are well trained. So I really do not have to think about other things than surgery. So, but when, when I was doing the live surgery in Taiwan, uh, it was a good experience because uh, there was nothing ready, I'll say, because uh, they aren't doing the general surgery and they are a good staff, but still nothing was prepared well. So today's live surgery made me feel like uh, uh, surgery is not just about uh, you know one man show. Actually, it's a team play. Uh, I need a good team. You need, whomever it is, you know, you need a good team to good, do the you know, live surgery uh, or a good surgery to uh, do the you know better job. So I guess in terms of that, I had a much easier you know live surgery than before. But uh, as the patient was a little bit sensitive, well, pretty sensitive to the pain. Uh, that was a little unexpected point, so that uh, gave me a little of difficulties though. Yeah, that would be great because uh, we've been part of uh, uh, like a procedure like this. Uh, in our center, we do a lot of uh, postgraduate uh, convention, and we do uh, give them lectures, and I think uh, in, in participating in this type of uh, activity would be great for a continuing medical education for those who are interested. So back in the days, we were learning surgery through our photos or the 
articles, I would say papers, right? So <laughs> surgery is in motion, right? Uh, every single step, even though you take photos, you cannot imagine the steps in between. But by showing it through a you know, video, at the same time, you can explain, you can add your voice there. You can explain why this is going on, why this is important, or how long it takes. So, actually, it is not the best form, I, I would say. The best way to learn the surgery is be at the OR with the surgeon. But still, showing them through a video is by far the, one of the most efficient way, I would say. One of the most uh, transferable method of doing, uh, transferring our knowledge. So the trainees can at the same time. The difficulties with the actual live surgery at the OR, you cannot rewind it. You can only do it in your brain. But in a videos like this, you can watch it several times. You can ask the original surgeon why he did it like this or that. And you can, you know, image train yourself several times with the video. So uh, the benefits of the live surgery, the first one is uh, by far the most efficient way to transfer the surgical knowledge. The second, they can view it several times with uh, several, I mean, explanations. So I think that's, that's the reason why uh, we do the live surgery videos like this.